Hello, welcome to show 44 of The Truth by the Ministry of Jesus through Mark Kilgore and I am Mark. So, we're continuing on in this series about Jesus. We've done three shows so far on him. We've got several more to do. And if I did not dedicate this show to somebody, someone, I want to dedicate this show to my God, my Savior, my Lord, and my best friend, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. You're the best. Okay. So. So another thing, so we were talking about purposes of Jesus, what things, reasons why he came, things that he came to do. One of them is teach of and eventually give and teach how to give and receive the Holy Spirit. Luke 11. Luke 11, 9 through 13. Thank you, Lord. Luke 11, 9 through 13. Jesus is speaking, and I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asks receives, and he that seeks finds. And to him that knocks, it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? And if he asks a fish, will he give him a, a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he give him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask, or good things to them that ask, says another version. I mean, another gospel book. Okay, so, Jesus came to make clear the ways of life and death. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. James 4.12 says that there is one lawgiver who is able to both save and to destroy. Jesus came to give the Holy Spirit and give spiritual gifts. Okay, 1 Corinthians 12, 1 through 10. 1 Corinthians 12, 1 through 10, because I don't want you to be ignorant. Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away under these dumb idols even as you were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaks by the spirit no man speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus cursed. And no man can say that Jesus is the Lord except by the Holy Ghost. Jesus is Lord. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are diver differences of administrations, but the same Lord. There are differences of operations, but it is the same God which works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge. These are the gifts of the Spirit by the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another the working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. And what I've really been thanking the Lord for lately is discernment of spirits. Very helpful. Jesus, okay, all right. Now we're going to jump on because uh, these... Uh, these gifts, they are useful as weapons because 
we are in a spiritual war, if you didn't know that. That is true. Okay, where are you, Book of Ephesians? Because I want to take a look at you. Ephesians. Okay. Ephesians 6.12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And it tells you to therefore, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. That you may resist and stand. 2 Corinthians 10, 3-5. 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 10, 3-5. Through For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of captivity, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Jesus shall judge among the living and among the dead. That's one of his duties. And that is expressed in John 5, 21 through 29. For as the Father raises up the dead and gives them life or makes them alive or raises them from the dead, even so the Son gives life to whom he will. For the Father judges no man, but has committed all judgment unto the Son that... All should honor the Son, even as they honor the, honor the Father. He that honors not the Son, honors not the Father, which has sent him. Truly, truly, I say unto you, He that hears my word, and believes on him that sent me, has everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Truly, truly, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live, for as the Father has life in himself, so has he given to the Son to have life in himself, and has given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, in which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice, and shall come forth, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Sounds like the second death to me. If it's not the, uh, the harpazo, the catching up. Alright. So, the living. You know, the Lord has said a few things to me that are really important. The living are going to heaven. The dead are going to hell. The living are going to heaven. The dead are going to hell. Then when I had a face to face with Jesus, he said this to me, if you will not humble yourself and become as a little child, you will by no means enter into the kingdom of heaven. If you will not humble yourself and become as a little child, you will by no means enter into the kingdom of heaven. Wow, do we really need to get into the curses? Maybe people are so, because some, some people are so dumb that they think, oh, you know, really, I mean, in life, if, if I get cancer, I'm thinking, that's bad. But, oh, if, if it's in the Bible, oh, maybe God puts cancer on me and that's good. Maybe he wants to teach me something or, or bring me to some humility or break my pride. No, that, that's a big lie of the devil. If you want to know what the curses are, I can let you know what the curses are. Do you want to know what the curses are? Well, you're gonna get you're gonna get learned of them. The curses, because the Lord has set before you life and death, 
And then he says, choose life. The curses are in Deuteronomy 28.15 all the way through 68. Wow. That, that is, uh, that's a lot of curses. I mean, it, I don't want to really read all that. That's a long time. But it shall come to pass, if you will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God to observe, to do all His commandments and His statutes, which I command you this day, all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. Cursed shall you be in the city and in the field. Cursed shall be your basket and your store. Cursed shall be the fruit of your body and the fruit of your land and the increase of your kind and the flocks of your sheep. Cursed shall you be when you come in and when you go out. The Lord shall send upon you cursing, vexation, and rebuke in all that you set your hand to do until you be destroyed until you perish quickly because of the wickedness of your doings whereby you have forsaken me. The Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto you until he has consumed you from off the land wherever you go to possess it. The Lord shall smite you with a consumption and with a fever and with an inflammation and an extreme burning and with the sword and with blasting and with mildew and they shall pursue you until you perish. And your heaven that is over your head shall be brass, and the earth that is under you shall be iron. The Lord shall make the rain of your land powder and dust. From heaven shall it come down upon you until you be destroyed. The Lord shall cause you to be smitten before your enemies. You shall go out one way against them, and flee seven ways before them, and shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. Your carcass shall be meat unto the fowls of the air and unto the beasts of the earth, and no man shall scare them away. The Lord will smite you with the botch in Egypt, and with the, with the hemorrhoids, and with the scab, and with the itch, where you cannot be, whereof you cannot be healed. The Lord shall smite you with madness, and with blindness, and astonishment of heart. And you shall grope at noonday, as the blind gropes in darkness. You shall not prosper in your ways. You shall be only oppressed and spoiled no more, and no man shall save you. You shall betroth the wife, and another man shall lie with her. <laughs> you shall build a house, and another man shall dwell therein. You shall plant a vineyard, and shall not grapes shall not gather the grapes thereof. Wow, that sounds really horrible. I <clears throat> that sounds really horrible. You shall become an astonishment and a proverb and a byword among all nations where the Lord shall send you. Your sons and daughters shall be given unto another people and go into captivity. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon you and pursue you and overtake you till you be destroyed because you did not hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded you and they shall be upon you for a sign and a wonder and upon your seed forever because you serve not the Lord your God with glad with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all and and there are still even more curses all the way down through 68. 66 says, And your life shall hang in doubt before you, and you shall fear day and night, and shall have no assurance of your life. Wow, what horrible curses. Then, then there are blessings. They're not nearly as many, uh, not nearly as long. And it shall come to pass, if you shall hearken, this is uh, Deuteronomy 28, and it shall come to pass, if you shall hearken to the, diligently to the voice of the Lord your God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command you this day, that the Lord your God will set you on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on you and overtake you, if you shall hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed you shall be in the city, and blessed you shall be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body and the fruit of your ground, 
and the fruit of your cattle, and the increase of your kind, and the flocks of your sheep. Blessed shall be your basket and your store. Blessed shall you be going, coming in and going out. The Lord shall cause your enemies that rise up against you to be smitten before your face. They shall come out against you one way, and they shall flee before you seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon you in your storehouses and in all that you set your hand unto. And he shall bless you in the land which the Lord your God gives you. The Lord shall establish, establish you a holy people unto himself, as he has sworn unto you, if you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. And all the people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. And the Lord shall make you plenteous in goods, and and uh, plentiful in goods, and and in the fruit of your body, and in the fruit of your cattle, and in the fruit of your ground, and in the land, and in 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 the fruit of the ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give you. The Lord shall open unto you his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain upon your land in his season, and to bless all the work of your hand. And you shall lend unto many nations, and you shall not borrow. And the Lord shall make you the head and not the tail. And you shall be above only, and you shall not be beneath. If that you hearken unto the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day, to observe and to do them. And you shall not go aside from any of the words which I command you this day, to the right hand or the left, to go after gods or to serve them. I'll tell you what you need to do. One of the things you need to do is respect and help and uh, honor your parents, your mother and your father, no matter what age you are or what age you get to. Another thing that you need to do is you need to flee fornication, for therein is your sanctification, thus saith the Lord. Deuteronomy 31 to 20, what is that? The rewards of repentance. Thirty Deuteronomy thirty fifteen says, See, I have set you before this day life and good, death and evil. Verse 19 says, I call heaven and earth to record against you this day that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your seed may live, that you may love the Lord your God, and that you may o obey his voice, and that you may cleave unto him, for he is your life, and the length of your days, that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. Yes, Lord. Ten Commandments. If you don't know the Ten Commandments, we're going to hit them. Exodus 20. It'll, it'll probably scare you how few of them you can actually name. Okay? Exodus 20, 1 through 17. Number one, you shall have no other gods before me. Two, you shall not make unto you any graven image or... This is about idol worship, okay? Don't don't make any image or graven thing or or any artwork or whatever that uh, that you end up that you bow down to your yourself to them nor ser or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the sins of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Third commandment. You shall not take the Lord of the you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that takes his name in vain. For remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the Sabbath day is is uh, the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work uh, nor your son or daughter or manservant, anybody that's within your gates in the sixth day. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and the sea and all in them and rested the seventh day. 
Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. I've, I've noticed that uh, Jesus has no qualms about having me do his work on the Sabbath day. And that's no surprise um, if you read the Bible. Um, commandment 5. Honor your mother and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God gives you. That's the only commandment of the ten with a promise, that you'll have a long life if you honor your mother and your father. Six, you shall not kill. Seven, you shall not commit adultery. Eight, you shall not steal. Nine, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Ten, you shall not, you shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his manservant, or his maidservant, or his ox, or his donkey, or anything, that's, or his car, or anything that's his. And his gadgets, his toys. Matthew 22, 22 Lord, this series will take forever. It will seem if I do all this. Oh, this is talking about the marriage supper. Jesus is saying that the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king which made a marriage for his son and sent forth his uh, servants to call them that were invited to the wedding, and they wouldn't come. And he sent forth uh, other servants, saying, Tell them that are bidden, saying, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they, but they mocked it, they scoffed it, made, made light of it, made jokes, went their way, one to his farm, one to the merchant, merchandise, and the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. When the king heard of this, he was wroth, but he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Then he said to his servants, sounds like Sodom and Gomorrah. Then he said to his servants, the wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go therefore into the highways, and as many as you shall find, bid to the marriage. So those servants went under the highways and gathered together as many as they found, both good and bad, and the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, there was a man which did not have on a wedding garment. And he said unto him, Friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? And the man was speechless. And the king said to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Matthew 22, 29 says, You do error, not knowing, Jesus says, You do error, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. That's probably the dunamis of God, I'm guessing. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given our marriage, but are as angels of God in heaven. Or as the angels of God in heaven. But touching the resurrection of the dead... Have you not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? God is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. And when the multitude heard this, they were astonished at his doctrine. The great commandment. We've already hit the Ten Commandments. Now, they say in... Uh, Matthew 22, 36, Master, what is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and the great commandment. The first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Okay, uh, verse 41, Matthew 22, 41. Pharisees were gathered together. Jesus asked them, What think you of Christ? Whose son is he? 
They said unto him, The son of David. He said unto them, How then does David in spirit call him Lord, saying, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit you at my right hand till I make your enemies my footstool. Sit you at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. If David then calls him Lord, how is he his son? And no man was able to answer him a word, neither dared ask him any question from that day forward. He shut their mouths. Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 1 to 16. Matthew 5, 1 to 16. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you, and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so did they persecute the prophets which were before you. Okay, I love you, Jesus loves you, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.